Last month, U.S. forces left Afghanistan after the largest airlift in U.S. history. Although thousands were evacuated, the Biden administration left behind an unknown number of Americans. But the effort to rescue them isn't over. These covert videos provide a true look at life inside Afghanistan under Taliban rule, arrests, abductions, and executions. I believe the level of desperation is even worse now uh, without the U.S. troops there, without any exit, and uh, people are hiding in safe houses and hiding on the run. The Taliban is actually door to door doing executions where they're going to grab people, stuffing them in trunks of cars and driving them off the execution sites. I can imagine the on the ground panic there is even worse than it was during those evacuation days. When the U.S. announced its pullout, Chad Robichaud joined other retired Special Forces members to form SaveOurAllies.org. He says they rescued more than 12,000 U.S. citizens and Afghan allies during the chaotic weeks before the U.S. military's final flight out. The good news is, is that we're still being successful with evacuations, not in the big numbers that we were. Uh, we're, you know, we're still getting 100 to 200 people out per day. This type of rescue operation is nothing new to Dave Eubank of the Free Burma Rangers. We're trying to help people get out any way we can. And I'm really grateful to the Tajik government that right now has a, a very humanitarian look of how can we help people. The White House and State Department put the number of U.S. citizens left behind to about 100. Robichaud says the math doesn't add up. The truth is, it's not a few hundred. My guess is at least 5,000. Whatever the number, U.S. citizens are in danger. They are hunting down people right now, trying to get all the names of anyone they perceive as an enemy. They're scared. They don't know what to do. They feel abandoned uh, by our country that has a responsibility to help them. Robichaud and Eubank say leaving no one behind is an American value. The truth is, it doesn't matter if it's 5,000, it doesn't matter if it's 200, it doesn't matter if it's one, because from where I come from as an American, especially in the special operations community, if one American is behind enemy lines, if one American's life is in danger, we will use every bit of military force and strength uh, and scorched the earth around that person to rescue that person. He fears the Biden administration, news media, and much of the world are moving on. For Afghan women, life got a lot worse after this Taliban decree. All widows under the age of 35 whose husbands were killed in the previous regime, if they are still widowed, will marry the Mujahideen of the Islamic Emirate. We have 20 million women that are immediately declared as sex slaves. The amount of, of trafficking, sex trafficking, that's going to happen out of Afghanistan. Article 2. All patriotic and Muslim parents of Afghanistan are called upon to give your daughters over the age of 18 to be given to their husbands in order to maintain Islamic ethics. Actually, almost every day, Chris, I had started to cry because I thought of these little girls left in the hands of the Taliban. Mm. And that's, that's the biggest thing. And Article 3, all women working in government offices are now ordered to stay in their homes. The murder and persecution of Christians and all this stuff is happening right now. And uh, it seems like not only the White House and the mainstream media, but the entire international community wants to be silent. Yet the international community may soon decide if the Taliban will be Afghanistan's recognized government. The Taliban just nominated an ambassador to represent them at the U.N.